The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, uh, folks. Welcome to the September 29th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. Uh, thanks so much for uh, joining us, uh, folks. Obviously, hurricane uh, uh, stuff still going on in the uh, state of Florida, so it's great to actually be with you here in the southeast. We fared pretty well. Our big night was uh, was uh, Tuesday evening. Uh, as you may, may remember, I uh, took off uh, as soon as the show was over on Tuesday to uh, Naples to board up our uh, condo uh, over there uh, since the uh, storm had shifted. Thank God we did that. It's about uh, four or five miles off of the, uh, off of the Gulf. And uh, luckily, the uh, storm surge, probably everybody saw that storm surge yesterday, did not make its way all the way up, which was kind of a concern because the last big storm we had there, if you go down just a couple of miles um, to the uh, north, Bonita Springs, um, which is kind of the Home Depot that I shop at out there, um, that the storm surge made it all the way last time, made it all the way up to the Thai 75. So uh, luckily, everything is good there. We're just without uh, Internet. Uh, here, uh, hopefully the show, we don't have any issue. Here in the Del Rey area, uh, we had a bunch of water spouts, well, two water spouts that uh, came in off of the uh, off of the ocean and onto land. Uh, I have a back porch that's off of my uh, off of my bedroom. Uh, we sat up there and you, which uh, looks to the south, so it looks to, towards Miami, and it looks to the west, looks towards the Everglades and the Gulf out there. And it was first, it was quite interesting uh, uh, in watching that storm because all, all the clouds were very low, and there was this extraordinary lightning storm that was going on, um, and just with the cloud cover. But then you could see with those water spouts, and as they made their way on shore, you could see uh, where transformers were getting blown up. Just the colors that were in the sky. Uh, at that low level were, were kind of amazing. So cool to watch, but really kind of unfortunate to have to watch that. But everybody has, is okay here, and we just have a lot of – now, today we've got a lot of wind, uh, more wind than we had yesterday. So uh, – and we have, I have had the Internet uh, flick on and off a couple of times. So hopefully we don't have those issues out here. Uh, everything is good. The folks in central Florida, I've got a brother-in-law up there. He has a little creek behind his house. That creek last night turned into a river. And then early this morning, that river turned into a lake, and they had to uh, evacuate. Um, he said it wasn't that easy to get the car door open and get people in and try to get the heck out of there. So uh, still waiting. They can't get back in to uh, – there were some friends now, but they can't get back in to see what's going on there. But um, in any event, so let's get to the uh, shows out here. Um, I was stalling a little bit because I had to actually reboot my system because um, the data, I think it was the Internet issues that I've had this morning that were kind of throwing things off. So let's talk to, talk about where we're at, uh, where the markets may be headed to. Right now at 11.09 in the morning, you've got all the U.S. Ec oh, US uh, indices trading to the downside. And actually, all the sectors inside the S&P 500, pretty much everything except for the XAU, which is kind of interesting, the GDX. So that held up really well yesterday. So that's one sector of the market. And gold is actually off a couple of bucks. Lights we crude just went up uh, 24 cents, trade out 82 and change out there. Uh, lead the charge dollar wise. The upside, you got Vail Resorts, Resorts, MTN's a ticker symbol there, up seven bucks or three percent. Um, Golden Sun Education Group up six bucks, 22 percent. Just looking for something other than an ETF out there. To the downside, Mercado Libre, it's up 22 bucks. CarMax down 22 percent. That's a big stinker. Uh, so certainly the uh, appears the interest rates are impacting the car buying out there. It's off 20 bucks. Asmil Holdings off 17 or 4 percent. Solar Edge Technologies down almost uh, 7 percent, 17 bucks. Air Regeneron is off 2 percent or 14 buckaroonies there. So that kind of covers that area. Now that we've got the uh, system back up, let's go to the very first thing that people should be aware of, and that is that we do have new daily profiles that have formed for each of the daily equity future contracts out here. So let's give those uh, uh, values to you. Uh, for the ES Mini, The uh, actually I could probably just do this. If, you wish, if those of you that want to grab data, let's see how this fans out. Yeah. 
Um, let's just go look at the charts out here. Uh, I've had to, I'd have to spend a little time to dress that up. So the new profile for the ES Mini, the bottom of that profile is 39.45. The top of the profile is 38.06. As long as price remains above that 36.45 level, price should try to make its way up to the 38.06 level. Now, before it gets up there, it may have a, an issue with it when it deals with its red daily oscillator and change line. We'll take a look at that as we switch over to other charts. The NQ also has a new profile. Support is 11.241. Resistance is 11.840. The center of the profile, 11.541. The Dow Equity Future Contract, bottom of its new profile is at 29.123. Resistance, 31.256. And the center is at 35.45. The Russell. It's new profile out here, 1665.75 to the downside. That's the bottom or support. And then you've got resistance at 1757. So what we know right now is we've seen the sell-off yesterday by the so here's what here's what we know. Each of the equity future contracts have at a minimum TD9 count bottoms. Some have confirmed by the D point patterns. For example, the ES mini yesterday completed a key reversal bar. That's where the bar exceeded the uh, high and low of the prior bar and finished in the opposite direction. So at least one tick to the upside out there. And you need to be in an extreme uh, condition or a stretch condition. Well, an A to B equals CD to the downside is most certainly qualifies for that. You did not get a key reversal bar inside the NQ, but it still has its TD9 count bottom. You got the key reversal bar inside the Dow, so it also has a buy the D point pattern. No key reversal bar inside the Russell 2000, but it still has its TD9 count bottom out there. So the TD9 count bottoms, as of 1112, have held. Now, that doesn't mean that they're anywhere near out of the woods. Let's go take a look at what Taz market breadth looks like right now for four different time frames. We were taking a look at, we're going to, here's the SP 500. Negative for each. So in the case of the short-term time frame, the one we would look at first, the uh, 60 minutes, you've got 42 instruments above profile, 412 below. So you've got to expect a choppy market on every rally to be tested and to be uh, sold out here, especially while you've got negative market breadth. <clears throat> if we look at the NASDAQ 100, it's a uh, it's really suggests a choppy market. The 60-minute time frame, here, will just expand this out, make sure I'm in the right spot. I am. Uh, what we can see here, and you're looking at the left-hand side where I've got the market breath statistics 16 trading above 15 7 trading below on the hourly time frame however and this is very helpful this should be very helpful for everybody that's trading especially intraday traders out there the 240 minute chart still remains with a bullish crossover and that suggests that uh, we'll go take a look at the 60 minute chart see what it's doing but it suggests that price should reach a support level and hold no guarantee that it'll do that but that's what in essence the message is so you've got 35 instruments above profile and 28 below for a 60 minute time frame. Now, what I really should do here, and I will do it, is start up the short term, uh, the 30 minute chart out here, and take a look at what its profile levels are. So we know we've got positive on the uh, 240 for the, uh, let me just, uh, for the uh, NQ out here. Here is the 30 minute time frame. Again, just trying to assess where the markets are, what the market breadth looks like, just to assist us in what the intention of the market is. And as we take a look at the 30 minute chart here, let's get to the NASDAQ, the NQ out here. And in the NQ, in the case of the NQ, what it has right now is 38 instruments above profile, 13 below. So we should see a rally attempt form at least inside the NQ. Again, it's going to be choppy if we just simply take a look at market breadth out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, great to be with you. Hope everybody that's listening in uh, fared the hurricane well. Uh, those of you that are in the Northeast, Jacksonville, Daytona, and so forth, uh, just hunker down and stay put. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Right back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this, combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits, this distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, now, folks. Let's finish off, take a look at the NQ here, then we'll go to a couple of requests that we have in the system from Alton and Coda. Uh, and that is, uh, we were looking at the NQ, we were taking a look at the TAS market breadth, which was uh, bullish for the 30-minute time frame, bullish for the 240-minute uh, time frame. It was bearish for the 60 minutes. So kind of confusing messages out here. But as we now take a look at the detailed charts, let me make sure that's the panel we're looking at. It is. If you look at the 10-minute chart here, you can see a quick little roads momentum indicator bottom pattern. Price got up to the top of its profile since giving it up at this stage here, but just consolidating with inside that profile. TD9 count bottom on the 15-minute chart. Price got up to that oscillator and change on. It was red. It rejected that. Now it says, okay, it wants to go test support, which is 11, 184, and change out there. The 30-minute chart, I do not have a bottom signal here. The 60-minute chart, price is pulling back and testing support. That's after its TD9 count top that formed out here at uh, yesterday's uh, close. Price is testing at 11,215 area. Uh, the 120 minute chart, you can see Rhodes momentum indicator bottom that had formed yesterday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, that was both on the uh, two hour, the four hour. Um, it didn't get that same exact signal on the uh, five hour time frame chart. So support areas are being tested. As long as that market breadth remains where it does, bullish, which was for the 30 minute and the 240, we should see a rally attempt form out here. At least that's the message. That's how I read the charts at this stage. Now, the key area that uh, price would need to close above, and you can see it, it's this red oscillator and change on. I'll expand out the daily chart. That is really the first real key level of resistance that could suggest that there would be something to this counter trend move. I remember a new profile that is formed out there, So, uh, uh, and that is new. It is not uh, something we have to wait for at the day's end. So let's continue on. Let's take a couple of questions, field some questions that have come in. The first one coming in from Alton. And Alton writes in and says, I hope you survived, Ian. Yes, we, we have. No problem. Looking to get it to BLV. BLV is the Vanguard Bond Index Fund's long-term bond. So you're looking to get into it. Um, and uh, so if we're looking for signals here, um, you know, what I don't know is, is this just trade off of the 30-year Alton, I mean, have to go back. So I, I first suggest go back and see what this is looking at, what was contained with inside uh, this uh, uh, this bond fund. 
What I can share with you with regard to whether there's a bottom uh, out here or anything is if we take a look at the daily time frame chart, uh, what we have out here, let me see, G, let me see, uh, that G, yeah, so I don't have a, well, I take that back. Certainly, there is a, a, a by the D point pattern that had uh, formed out here. So it's easier for me to draw that pattern. Well, first, let's take a look at this. Your real key level of resistance, Alton, is going to be that uh, uh, red oscillator and change line. So you do have a buy the D point pattern. I'll just simply draw in the A to B. We'll just stay with this chart here and then I'll just simply move that over. So there's your A to B level and then the B, a, B to C, C to D area out here is going to be, it looks like it's going to be an, expans an expansion of that A to B level. Yeah, most certainly it is. Um, and yesterday was a bullish reversal candle. So, and you have a new profile. So your support level, if you're going to take a position here, you want to watch 7140. If price closes below 7140, probably not a good idea to stay with this trade out here. Your resistance level is $73.11. If price can get above that, then where price will find the sellers is between 74.53 and 75.06. That's its bearish structured daily profile. If I look at a weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart does get us to a wave number seven, but the only way that that gets confirmed is a lower high, a higher low, a higher low uh, next week. Uh, we do not have any other signal out here of a bottom uh, for BLV for its weekly time frame, and for the uh, monthly time frame, this says don't don't even consider this, Alton. Don't go bottom fishing here. Why why do I say that? Because this month, which ends tomorrow, uh, is going to negate its monthly. TD9 count bottom out here. So, yeah, you might get a counter trend move, most certainly. But uh, this, these charts here are really suggesting caution and to uh, stay away from that. Uh, CKB wanted to take a look at the uh, bond. So let's do this here. It'll take just a moment here for this to populate. But let's put up the 30-year uh, Treasury charts out there. So it just keeps in line with the thinking. I, I don't want to, you know, I'm assuming that this bond fund is still in long-term. Is it still in long-term corporate bonds? Again, I don't know what this is at, uh, Ian, but that's really the important thing is take a look at what the underlying instruments are. To the extent it's a 30-year Treasury uh, bond out here, we can see that yesterday in the 30-year Treasury, CKB, the daily time frame chart, that's the third one from the left, second one from the right on the upper shelf out there. That yesterday was, well, the day before was the completion of a TD9 count bottom. Uh, there's certainly an A to B equal C to the downside. Yes, there was a nice big bull sash candle. What we can see is that price went ahead and found resistance at that oscillator and change line. So that is really, the, and I'll just simply expand out the daily time frame chart out here. And let me pull this back just a tad. And so we can see that oscillator and change line has really acted as resistance. Now, if price can get above that. And there's a new profile on the 30 year treasury as well. Um, so if price can get above that red oscillator and change line, we should see a further rally. You can see that it's got profile resistance just as that other instrument, uh, BLV, had in it. So this is, even though you've got a bottom, it's really kind of a neutral type signal out here, CKB. Price would really need to close above that oscillator and change line to suggest some potential traction out there. And if we look at the uh, monthly time frame, uh, price may form bar, well, it's going to, may form, may complete a TD9 count bottom on a monthly basis this month. This is a bar following bar number nine. Price right back at the breakout support level of 127.14. We're slightly below that right now. The weekly chart, though, is not confirming that pattern. The weekly chart needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. That's what those black diagonal lines are showing us right now. So the daily has some potential and promise. Got to close above that red oscillator and change line. The 30-minute chart is going to complete a TD9 count top at 11.30. That's six minutes from now. That would suggest that we should see a retracement. That retracement should take us back to 126 and change out there. That's the only topping signal that I see at the moment. If price closes above whatever the high of the uh, current uh, bar is out there, and I don't know where that will be in the next five minutes, but if price does close above that high, that tells you about a strong momentum move to the upside and expect price to go test that daily oscillator and change line. So I uh, hope that helps uh, both of you guys out, Elton and uh, or girls, uh, CKB. Hope that helps you out as uh, well. The next question uh, coming in here from Coda is to take a look at ticker symbol HDGE. Let's look at the dollar, too. For the dollar, I'm going to have to uh, change the charts around. I'll do that during the uh, breakout here uh, just so we can get a clear picture. HDGE. So HDGE is what? Sounds like hedge to me. Um, let's uh, get this thing uh, populated. It, it is the uh, Ranger Equity Bear ETF. 
So I don't know what's inside that. Uh, so uh, uh, you know, the, 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 I'll give you what the what the ETF itself is saying here. Uh, but what the instruments inside there are saying, I don't know. Uh, on the daily time frame, what we don't have is a bearish signal. No, we don't. Uh, even though you can see a com a completed TD nine, the high came in on bar number seven. So for Stevie, that doesn't work. Price is trading above the top of its daily profile, which was tested yesterday. It tested rejected screen off certain change line. That is a bullish signal. This is suggesting to me that what Hedge wants to do is make its way up to its Rosemont indicator top that formed in June in the 32 area. Now, before I can do that, Hedge would need to close above the top of its weekly profile. And that's where the real battle is for you, Coda, and that's at the price area of 3050. If price can close above that, well, and you've got an A to B equal CD to the upside on the weekly time frame. The price should get back to those recent highs out there. And the monthly has a resistance at 32.45. So that's what's going on inside of Hedge. Uh, I'm going to shut that down and try to get the uh, charts for the U.S. dollar up for Coda inside the Tiger's Den. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, the request is to take a look at the U.S. dollar index. That's what we've got up on our screen. We've got the, uh, the uh, six different instruments that actually make up the U.S. dollar index. So in the very... Bottom right here, I'll just simply expand out the uh, chart out here. We've got the uh, December contract for the U.S. dollar. You'll see that yesterday was a confirmation of a Broad's momentum indicator top out here. And right now, price is testing its green oscillator and change line. Now, there are two different sets of profiles that I have for the U.S. dollar index, and we use both. Sometimes that happens on the uh, different, uh, even though it's using the same data to uh, generate this information, it is coming up with two different sets of profiles. I'll show that to you momentarily. But right now, what's most important here, uh, CODA and uh, Peak G, 
is uh, prices testing and so far has rejected a key area of support. And that's that green oscillator and change line. So a green oscillator and change line lets you and I know that the price oscillator is above zero and it is still rising. Those are bullish conditions. If price closes below a green oscillator and change line, then it says look for the next area of support. Well, the next area of support on this chart here for the US dollar index would be 111.91. As far as bars that were in out here, if today's close closes below 112.82, there will be no TD9 count out here, uh, Coda. That will simply go away and the pattern will have been violated. Uh, but it's already got a top, but the top has pushed price down to support. And that support so far as we speak has held. Now, let's go look at the other currency pairs before we switch over to the other U.S. dollar index charts that I've got that show you that suggest that the move lower is just is, is still bullish, that the U.S. dollar is still very bullish. Now, the case of the euro, this formed yesterday a Rhodes Mint indicator bottom. It is dealing with its red oscillator and change line. The red oscillator and change line for the euro is uh, at 97.51. Now, this is going to negate. Uh, or it appears that this will negate its TD9 count today. It needs to close below the close of bar number four for the euro. That would be 0 0.966690. Uh, that's where price would need to close below uh, for that uh, TD9 count pattern to remain active. But we don't need that pattern. It doesn't need that pattern to identify a bottom. It did that yesterday with that bullish reversal candle. That was the Three River Morning Star that confirmed that Rhodes Mint indicator bottom. The Japanese yen. Uh, which the government uh, certainly tried to strengthen out here. Uh, the day that it did that, that confirmed a Rhodes Mint indicator top. But there was already a TD9 count top that was in place out here. But that is just simply led to a sideways move. So they're not doing a great job here of strengthening the yen. Uh, if you take a look at the Great British Pound, a lot of discussion there. Uh, Bank uh, stepping in and uh, buying bonds out here. Well, there was a TD9 count that day of that flush to September 26th. That created bar number eight. The following session was bar number nine. That confirmed a TD9 count and then a uh, pattern completed uh, yesterday out there. Uh, so he's got a valid TD9 count bottom. If price closes above 1.099, then what price should do is go target and it should further strengthen. It should go target the 115 level. That's its TD9 count breakdown area. The Canadian dollar uh, formed a, a TD9 count top. The price remains above its green oscillator and change line, so its condition is uh, neutral. A TD9 count top inside the uh, Swiss uh, uh, franc and, Swiss, uh, and the Swedish corona, Swedish corona, the one that's on the left side. The price is testing and so far has held its green oscillator and change line, so its signal is neutral. So, so true for uh, so as well for the uh, Swiss franc out there. Uh, that's the one that shows a TD9 count top, and that's right here, this chart right next to the US dollar index. Price above that green oscillator and change line. So uh, oh, let me switch over and show you the other set of charts I'll do. This is using Stevie's um, a synthetic tool for the U.S. dollar index. It just stitches, stitches together the contracts, in this case here, the September and the December contract better. And in that case, then, because I've got more information, it can provide us with additional profiles. And voila, there you go. Here in the upper left-hand corner for the U.S. dollar index, you'll see this is showing a new profile forming below price. That is a bullish message. That says support would be at 111.91. So you got 111.91 for the um, top of the profile on my e-signal platform, 111.91, bottom of the profile on the Ninja Trader system. So 111.91, very clear for us, Coda and for uh, 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 a peak G out there, that is really the key level. If price closes below that, that really suggests a further move lower. Now that further move lower, we default back to this black background chart, and that would tell us that uh, price would pull back into the 110 to 109 area out there. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the uh, request. Uh, let's go to, um, we've got a caller on the line. It's Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. I'm so happy to hear your voice and that you're doing okay. Yes, doing uh, ju doing just fine. Uh, a lot of folks, though, you know, if you've if you've never been through a hurricane, which you know, I mean, you see it coming and so forth, and so it gives us the opportunity to you know escape to high ground and batten up the hatches, so to speak. Um, when you go through them, though, the damage that is done is just extraordinary. So those folks, you know, dealing with the water damage, the power issues, it's still hot down here. Um, you know, that's that's a mess that's going to last for some time out there. But, uh, yeah, all is well here. And I hope all is well with you also. Haven't spoken to you for a while. 
Yeah, it's all, everything's great. I'm just happy to hear that you're doing okay. And I know that can be very stressful. I'm sure you're dealing with the property and yeah, you know, one of your biggest investments and you got to deal with insurance and all the different, you know, <laughs> things that come with it. So that's, yeah, I'm sure yeah. it's not an easy deal. Yeah, nope, but uh, but uh, uh, we'll we'll take that versus having the uh, troubles that some of the folks are going to deal with. So I know you want to talk about uh, uh, GFI, Goldfields, is that correct? Yeah, I've been trying to uh, dip my toe into a couple of different equities in that area. One's the silver, and this one's in the, more in the gold area. But I just wanted to get your thoughts on it. And I know there's a lot of work to do. I, I, a lot of these had a good day yesterday, of course, with gold up, and, and the volume was decent. But I just want to get your thoughts on it. Sure. So I would take a look at the charts here. Let me switch over to the black background, the white background charts here. So just give me one moment. So yeah, yes, it was a nice deal. It's got a couple of different bottom patterns out here. So that's certainly something you like to see. It's got a wave number seven bat, uh, pattern that uh, uh, com that was confirmed on September 27th. It has a roads momentum indicator bottom pattern that was confirmed yesterday with the gap to the upside. Price is trading with inside its profile out here. So Brent, there's no signal to suggest that uh, GFI wants to do anything other than at the moment, go up and tag the top of its profile resistance at $8.50. So that's the message coming from the daily time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart does have an A to B equals CD pattern. It looks like that is going to be some to draw the A to, whoops, that didn't work out. I'm here. I'm going to draw in the A to B line, and then we'll just simply take that to the C point. So here's A to B, and if we take that, uh, this is going to be close, or maybe not close at all. No. So we don't have it confirmed by the D point pattern out there. Uh, that would have had to have taken price down to about the 560-ish type area. So I don't have a confirming signal on the weekly chart. What the weekly chart can assist you and I with here, Brent, is that oscillator and change line, which is 831. So what we do know is the daily said, hey, I want to make a move up to the 850, the top of its profile. But clearly that oscillator and change line is a resistance level. So in order for 850 to come to fruition, you need to see a close on the weekly base above 831. As I look at the monthly time frame chart for gold fields, I don't have anything here to suggest that it's a bottom. Doesn't mean that it's not. You know, you first start with the shorter term time frame, that's the daily. In order for that to bleed over into the monthly, we need to see price close above the top of that profile, 850. And then the next target level would be 949. Brett, what questions do you have about what we've covered so far? We're going to go to a break in about 15 seconds. That was it, really, Steve. I, I much appreciate it. I'm sure you have a lot of questions that are coming in and, and you know, people have things they want to ask you about. So okay. thank you so much for our thoughts and our prayers and just you take care and thank you so much for your help. Thank you very much, Brett. Thanks for calling. Always good to hear from you. And folks, I'd love to hear from you as well. 877-927-6648. Those phone lines are open. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We've got the uh, charts for the semis. We're using the uh, SMH, the ETF. This is for uh, Nicholas, who wrote in. And uh, Nicholas, thanks for all your well wishes as uh, well. So you're specifically asking, um, would you go over SMH, support, new profile, and so forth? So uh, I, I, absolutely. And I'm glad that you, you uh, wrote in to ask about this uh, stock chart. So a couple of different things going on here. The first is that Today is going to form bar, well, it appears that today will form bar number eight of a TD9 count. In order for that to occur, Nicholas Price needs to close below 192.37. Then, this will be the low of the pattern. Then, tomorrow could be bar number nine. But in order for bar number nine to complete, Price will need to close below 190.13. If those two things happen, then you will get a TD9, a confirmed TD9 count bottom. But do remember that the bottom or the bottom the bottom of that pattern can form on the bar following bar number nine. So that says Monday would be the earliest time that we would see a potential bottom signal. Now I'm saying that knowing that right now price is trading below its bullish engulfing candle. That confirmed a buy the D point pattern. So that is being negated. And that's really bad news. And yesterday's rally, right up into the oscillator and change line, right up into the bearish structure of its current profile up in that 195.03 area. And so, you know, the question is, will this TD9 count pattern take hold? Uh, and uh, and I don't know the answer to that. We don't even know if it will form just yet. It's got the potential. What we do, though, know as of 11.43 is if price closes below the high or the low from uh, today's Thursday, Tuesday, and that low out there is 188.89, the buy the D point pattern gets negated. Wait, hold on. Oh, this engulfed all those candles. So, yeah, it would be that low. It would be that low. If price were to, uh, yeah, that's the, if price closes below, make sure I give you the right number, 188.89. If price closes below 188.89, which it is trading at right now, it negates that pattern signal. And then that says, geez, this does not look good. You know, is the market really setting up for a significant move lower? Well, if we just take a look at the trend channels, out here, um, price channels out here, uh, using the weekly time frame, you're below profile, you are below a swing point from July. That swing point in July did volume of 17,841,000 shares. You're at 15 million shares as we speak right now. Average daily, yesterday, average daily movement is probably about 4 million shares, so about 8 million shares more on top of the 14. That's going to take us over that weekly swing point uh, volume of 17 million shares. So this suggests that what price may be doing is targeting its uh, descending trend line. Now, where is that going to be? I don't know. What we can say is on a weekly basis, 170.46 is a TD9 count breakout level. So that is most certainly one possibility that we're looking at inside the SMHs. You look at the monthly chart, the monthly chart is taking out the swing point of its B point of a potential A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, if I may, a TD9 count pattern 
because price did close below and is trading below 216.14, its first TD knockout breakout level, that suggests that price may want to target the downside, the next area. And that's at 126.11. That's what its message is. Real quickly, just to look at the 30 minute time frame chart, see if there's any signal out here. And the reason that we're spending some time on this, the reason I say, hey, thanks, Nicholas, for bringing this up so we could take a look at it, is because markets typically do not bottom unless the semis bottom. And yesterday was looking pretty good. Today is looking like, uh, no, not so good at all. Now, let's go take a look at that longer term, potential longer term. We'll, we'll make that determination tomorrow. Uh, a to B equals C. That's the monthly chart. That's on the right-hand side out here. So the A point is going to be the high from November of 2021. The B point was the uh, low at 189.94. That's uh, the low of July. And then it makes a 45% retracement into the high of August 1st. That volume on that monthly basis was 80 million shares. You are already at 85 million shares. So you have a confirmed monthly AB equals CD to the downside that suggests move down to the 118.18 level. The weekly, as we talked about, is trading below 189.94. It's doing that with uh, what looks like will be volume. Uh, today, uh, price is trading below the swing point from July, July the 5th, that is. Uh, it's doing it on lighter volume. We're about 2.8 million shares, two hours into it. So 2.8, so 36. Uh, it's going to be close, but looks like it still might be light volume. But whether it's light volume or not, it doesn't matter. If you close below yesterday's, well, really the low of two days ago, because that was a bullish engulfing candle at that one uh, 188 89 level it negates the buy the d point pattern now if you close back above that then the buy the d point pattern remains in effect even though price would be below the bottom of its daily profile which is 190 94 so nicholas and everybody else i do hope that that helps you out you got to pay attention to the daily time frame out here because uh, it still has a bottom pattern it's just being tested but watch that close inside the semis so thanks so much for the request out there let's see if we've got anything else that has come in um The answer is no, Steve, does, does after hours activity affect TD9 close signals? That's coming from Peak G. What, what ticker symbol are you, would you be, uh, oh, that's, sorry, that's from Dan. What ticker symbol, so you must be talking just about like Nike, uh, a cash instrument or something like that, uh, Dan. And if that's the case, I do not use pre-market and post-market data. So for me, it has no impact um, out there. Um, you know, where it, where it is used is in the futures accounts. So the futures accounts are the futures accounts, whether it's during high volume or low volume time periods. Uh, but with regard to the other instruments out there, um, I don't I don't use pre-market and post-market uh, data. Uh, I'm not even sure if I could. I'm sure that I, I'd have to work a little bit on that to figure out how to get these charts to do that. Um, and the problem is with Inside Ninja Trader, I think I make this one change for one instrument, and it would make it for all instruments. Um, so I have not done that. If I can find an easy way to do that, you know, I'll try to set that up and, and make you aware. But I, I do not. Um, yeah, I do not use the uh, pre and post market data um, for uh, for uh, cash indice instruments to make uh, TD9 count uh, decisions out there, or really any decisions uh, whatsoever. Uh, so I believe there was a request to take a look at Apple. So AAPL, I think that was from Nancy, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe I misread something, but I'm not going to go back and we're going to take a look at Apple anyways. If there was some other request from somebody in the Tigers Den, post it now. There's only a minute left in this uh, minute and a half, less than in this uh, session, and then a couple minutes as we go into the close. So when we take a look at Apple out here, well, this looks basically awful. So Apple right now, is that uh, truly what's going on here? AAPL. So Apple looks disgusting. So Mike, I gotta make sure I got my data feed. Yeah, wow. We're 143.42. So uh, price is uh, trading below this uh, hammer candle that confirmed it's by the D point pattern. That was a hammer candle from September 16th. That low out there is 148.37. That held yesterday. And in fact, you got really a, uh, you didn't get anything. So this Apple is not looking good. Uh, let's uh, let's go switch over. So here on these charts, if I take a look at the daily time frame, let me just expand it out. See if there's another TD nine count breakout level. No. So what Apple is suggesting it wants to do for you and I is head back to its June lows. So that and the semis that we just took a look at are not boding well here to the long side of these markets. At least not as of 11:50. You're below a B point. 
uh, inside of Apple. That B point was the week that uh, was September 16th. The volume there was 568 million shares. This month, well, we're at 377. So you're passing with light volume. You're back to breakout support. That's 143.16. But we come back from this break. We'll further look at Apple. Um, be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So the uh, stock chart for Apple, the daily time frame is up on our screen. You'll see the first A to B equals CD to the downside. This is a confirmed A to B equals CD. The B point on this was September 8th, 84 million shares. Price got below that with 162 million shares. So this suggests the one-to-one -one completion is around 140.79. So this says if we do see some type of bullish reversal candle over the next couple of days, if price does make its way down there, assuming that it's going to close uh, below, uh, well, let's just, uh, the, the, the first target is 140.79, next target 134.41. So it needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a buy the D point pattern. But there's more than one A to B equals CD pattern out here. So for example, there's actually three, I'm just drawing the first, the, the two in that are the easiest to identify. Uh, and the uh, second one for the B point would be September 16th which has volume of 162 million shares, and right now we're at 56. So that's being passed with light volume. That does not mean that this will not come to fruition. And this gives you a price target of 130.96. But this is the first A to B equals CD that I would be paying attention to. Watch today's close. If price were to rally and get above 148.37, then no damage inside of Apple. Let's uh, go take a look at uh, Facebook or Meta out here. Meta yesterday confirmed a Rosemontum indicator bottom pattern. 
with that uh, bull sash candle. What price did was it found resistance at its oscillator and change line. You also have a new profile here that has been uh, that has formed today. So the resistance zone is between 140.31 and 143.41 out there. So you got a daily bottom. You do not have a weekly bottom. 138.21. Uh, you would need a bullish reversal candle to confirm a road's momentum indicator. And in the case of the monthly chart, it suggests that price wants to make its way back into the 115.51 level. That is its TD9 count uh, breakout area. Uh, that was uh, formed back here in uh, December of 2018. You're trading into the monthly swing point that had volume of 104 million shares with 579 million shares so yeah you got a nice buy signal yesterday uh did not uh, tell you we're going to get any traction because price was unable to close above its red oscillator and change line uh if you get above a uh, close above 143.41 this has legs otherwise what meta is saying is it too wants lower price <laughs> folks day two we've got some great programming lined up for you today and uh i may not be with you tomorrow i believe i've got to get over i'm going to try to record it between eight and nine just depends on the further damage reports over in Naples. Take care, folks. We'll see you again soon.